Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna cover the most common recon tools that you're gonna see within any kind of ethical hacking course or any kind of training that you may take in the future or come across, as well as some of the most popular recon tools within Capture the Flags. So I decided not to cover these tools in any great amount of depth, just the basic overview, just so that you'd be familiar with them when you see them and come across them and know what they do. If you know of any tools you would like me to cover in the future, please let me know in the comments comments below. Thanks for watching. All right, in this video, we're going to cover a tool that is called dig and it will check for zone transfers you're going to hear about zone transfers it is a great way to find additional subdomains you can use fuff and gobuster and wfuzz and try and brute force for subdomains and use sublister but you can also use dig it's really quick and if there are any subdomains it's really helpful tool because you'll find them right away. So a DNS zone transfer is supposed to replicate a DNS database between DNS servers, which means if it is vulnerable to a zone transfer, it will give us information like subdomains and some other information, which we'll see in just a second. So we'll go ahead and run this. I have opened up the box friend zone from hack the box because it is vulnerable to a zone transfer and if you find a bug bounty program that's vulnerable to a zone transfer you're not actually able to exploit it and hack per se the web application but when you find a zone transfer and something is vulnerable to a zone transfer you'll you can report it as information disclosure because it's something that should not be open to the world so the easy way to test this is with a tool called dig and we'll just type in dig so we'll go dig a x f r and then we will say at and then we're going to use the ip address and then we'll use friend zone because that is the domain that we are after dot red and then we can run this and see what it spits out for us we have friend zone friend zone friend zone and administrator one so this would be something that would be worth checking out we have this hr we have an uploads which would also be something worth checking out if you're doing a ctf or if you find this information out in the wild and so you can actually save all of this into an out file and we'll just call it zone just like this and then from other recon that is done on this box you also find a another domain called friend zone portal just like this and we can run it and we find admin files imports vpn and you have all of these files as well and so if you double care it it will just append to our file so if we cat out zone we have all of this information and now if you have taken my little bash course you know that we can cat out the zone and we can go like this and we can say grep friend zone and make sure that works and so it'll point out it'll give us all everywhere that friend zone is located and then we can say grep in and then we want to awk for our cut and go ahead and put in our curly braces and quotes and we can say print dollar sign one because we only want what is at the front of this file and then we will see what happens yep that's what i thought was going to happen it gives us what we want and then we can say sort dash u and this should get rid of our replications right here and it does it sorts it out for us and we get rid of a lot of the repeats and now you have this nice little happy file with just the subdomains that we have pulled down from the zone transfer. So a zone transfer is something you should always look at. And if you're in a hack the box, you might have to add more of these to your Etsy host file. But out in the wild, these would be really good targets to go ahead and try to attack and find exploits on. So this is the zone transfer with the dig tool. You'll want to remember it whenever you see a port 53 that is open. That is the port that is used for a zone transfer. So a few things to remember about this specific tool. If you run an in-map scan, port 53, if it's open, you can always try for a zone transfer and see if you can pull down additional 
subdomains. It's a great place to grab subdomains. You can also report it as information disclosure if you are actually able to pull off a zone transfer. So with that, we will move on to the next tool. Okay, we are going to be looking at some vulnerability scanners. There are several that will be really helpful to you as we go along. I think I'm going to add more scanners to this section of the course. But for now, I'm going to use just the most popular ones that you're going to be able to use within bug mounting programs and CTFs. So one of the most popular ones that you're going to see, especially with web applications, is going to be Nikto. And you can run it. It's pretty simple. You just type in Nikto. It should be installed on Kali Linux already. Nikto-h and then the IP address that you will be attacking and it will automatically start running. If you ever do any kind of certification, I think Nikto is allowed on all certifications and some certifications I know it will actually pull up the vulnerabilities for you so all you have to do is run Nikto and then read it. Nikto runs on web applications, it searches for different exploits within a web application so if there's no web app Nikto is kind of worthless to you but there are other scanners out there that will go out and enumerate ports for you such as Nessus but this is one tool that you won't be able to use in a bug bounty program and you're probably not going to use it in a penetration test unless you are wanting to get busted by the blue team so we'll cover that tool in another video but this is Nikto, and make sure when you run any of these scanners to read all of the output because sometimes there will be little nuggets of information hidden within here. So one of the problems I used to really struggle with is just skimming the output of the scanners. And sometimes I would pass over information that was valuable. So like this right here. It tells us the Apache version that is running is out of date. So with this scanner, one of the things we would want to do is go and look to see if this Apache version is vulnerable and if it has been patched. So this is Nikto. It will give you some information that will be helpful for you to check out. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we'll move on to the next tool. So this is kind of the last recon tool that we're going to be looking at in this section. It is going to be Shodan. .io. You're going to hear about this. This one is really popular because it is the search engine for everything. Now, if you make an account and sign up, there is a lot that you can access. Like you can actually look through webcams that are online. You can just type into the search engine webcams and look at webcams all over throughout the world. You can see traffic light webcams. There's just a whole lot of stuff you can do with Shodan. But for just the basic usage, I just want to show you like if we were to look at Yahoo and we hit enter and we let this load, it's going to give us back header responses. So you can look at these header responses. And as I was scrolling through here earlier, I saw some things that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, but you can make sure if you do use this and you type in Yahoo that these IP addresses are actually in scope if you're a bug bounty hunter because some of this might not be in scope for you. So if you type in Yahoo and let's try yahoo.com and see what comes back. I think it's probably going to be the same. Okay, and here it comes back. You can look through some of this information. It is pretty interesting what you'll find. I have found some stuff on here that is pretty sketchy that definitely should not be listed publicly. So Shodan just goes and crawls all of the internet and collects everything it can and all the information on all different IP addresses. And here is where you can access that information. You will for sure find it helpful in the future. Like I said, I have found information like basic information disclosures that you would not want on the internet by looking up targets on Shodan. So it's definitely one to check out and you can play around with it. As you learn more in the world of cybersecurity, a lot of the stuff you're going to see on Shodan is going to start to make more sense. I'm not going to break down what everything is right now and all the header responses and all the information that Shodan provides for you, but you can go look at it and as you get better, all this will start to make more sense to you 
and the responses and what you see will be second nature and you won't have to be Googling what different things are. A, another tool that would be worth your time investigating is the harvester. It looks like this, and this tool will go out and look for other domains and subdomains, and it will also find email addresses if you're a penetration tester for you to try and target, and the usage is really pretty simple. You just type in the harvester and then you would pass in a domain with the dash D and then you can pass in the source that you want to look for something. So you would just use domain.com and then let's say we wanted to use Google, you can put in a dash B and then google.com or any of these other options down here for the source and it will go out and it will try to look for domains and it will scrape all of these search engines for subdomains, email addresses, and things of that nature. So the Harvester is a penetration testing tool that you're going to hear about from time to time and it's one to be aware of and know that it exists. You're probably not going to use it in any pursuit of certifications or CTFs, but it is a really great recon tool and one you should know about and be aware of. All right, I want to cover two more tools that are recon tools that you're going to hear about, but I don't really use a whole lot because I don't think I get a whole lot of helpful information from, but you're going to see these in pretty much every penetration testing textbook, every certification course you ever come in contact with and they are who is and ns lookup we do ns lookup real quick because it doesn't give us back a whole lot of information so we can just type in ns lookup just like this and then you can do something like www.google.com and it's going to tell you their ip address the domain name you're going to get the ipv6 name back and it's going through port 53 and so this is a tool you would run if you see port 53 open same as dig and you can get just a little bit of information back with ns lookup so you'll hear about this and you will definitely see it in the future this is what it does but then there's another one that you're going to hear about and see regularly and it's who is and so if you type in who is google.com you're going to get back a whole bunch of information and if you're ever doing like a penetration test this is actually a good one to run because sometimes you can get back email addresses and a phone number and things like that about the company but you can find out a little bit more about the company so right here you see they're using the google domain servers right here which isn't that surprising being from google but if you look at this right here who is Google registered with. It's not even registered with Google domains, which is kind of ironic that Google is not does not have their own domain name registered with themselves. I'm guessing they must trust this Mark Monitor more with security than they trust themselves, which I mean is saying something. I think Google should probably switch that. But anyway, if you know why they're using Mark Monitor instead of Google domain names, then you can feel free to let me know in the comments. Maybe they're just using it just because they've never changed it once Google domains came out. Anyway, this is who is, and it just tells you more information about the domain name and where it's registered and the kind of the security behind it and who's running it and you can look up to see if there's any vulnerabilities or anything like that you're probably not going to find a whole lot from who is other than just about the domain name where it's registered who's it registered with an ip address and basic information like that so these are two tools that you're going to hear about for sure in the future and would be worth remembering but I don't use them all that much because I don't find them to be that helpful. I wanted to let you know about them because you will see them and hear about them in the future and now you know what they are and what they do. Another helpful tool that you're going to use especially inside of CTFs is a WP scan and you're going to use this with WordPress sites. So I've gone ahead and opened up Hack the Box and I have a tenant running here and if you have a hack the box subscription and you're wanting to follow along you will need to add tenant.htb to your etsy host file which i have already done so the wp scan tool is going to go out and look at all of the 
plugins on the WordPress site and see if any of them are vulnerable, if any of them are out of date. It's going to check the actual theme and see how old it is and how long it's been since it's had updates. And we can go ahead and check out WordPress scan right here, the WP scan dash help. And it will tell us all of the different flags and everything that we are able to use. And one thing that I can never remember what it actually looks like is this right here is the dash dash plugin detection. So what we will do is we'll type in WP scan dash dash URL HTTP slash slash and then we're going to go tenant.htb and then this dash e right here is going to tell it that we want to check all of the plugins. I sometimes call it all ports out of habit, but I think it's all plugins. We can actually just look if we scroll up. We're going to enumerate all plugins right here and we want to use the dash dash and then we want plugins dash detection and then we want to use aggressive and then you can do a dash o if you want to save this in a, in a file i pretty much never do that i'll just open a new tab and come back sometimes i'll have a whole bunch of tabs open up here and it's not always that helpful so it will flag things like this and tell you that a version is out of date and i told you this in the last video but i especially am really bad with WP scan because you get a lot of information, but you should read all the way through all of this. I remember doing a CTF about six months ago and I ran a WP scan and I just like skimmed through it and I ended up missing a vulnerability that gave me remote code execution and I wasted several hours of my time enumerating when I should have just read the entire scan. So make sure you read the entire scan when you run one. It might take you a little bit of extra time, but it will always be worth it because it will give you information even if you think it might not be helpful. It's like right here, it doesn't flag this, but it might be worth going out and checking this version 5.6. It's insecure on this specific release, and you can go and check this these different version numbers, and this might take a little while because we're running the aggressive, but that is okay. So this is WP scan. You're going to want to run this whenever you come across WordPress web applications. It is going to be your friend. You're going to use it regularly throughout your penetration testing career, especially in the world of CTS. And always remember, read the output.